Hey and welcome back. This is part 2 of making a toolmaker's vise for the milling machine. In part 1, we roughly machined out all the parts for the vise, so if you haven't seen that video, I'll leave a link in the description. In this video, I'm going to attempt to heat treat and harden the part. The steel is relatively soft, and even during the light machining of that part, it picked up quite a few scratches and dings. However, as I demonstrated at the end of the previous video, you can't harden the steel with which I used to make the vise using the normal heat and quench method that most of us are familiar with. The problem is that there just isn't enough carbon in the steel to harden it using that method, so the simplest solution is to go ahead and add more carbon to the steel and then we can heat treat it. Now there are many methods of hardening low carbon steel and the method I'll be doing is known as pack hardening and in my opinion it's the most accessible to the home workshop though it's definitely not a quick process. I'm going to start with our source of extra carbon, which is going to be a bag of normal lump charcoal that you use in a barbecue. I have seen a few people use crushed up barbecue briquettes, but from what I hear, lump charcoal is the preferred material. Now of course there are other sources of charcoal, you can make it yourself from leather, but this stuff only cost about 15 bucks for 7 kilos, which in my opinion is the easiest option. Now to use it for case hardening, we need to go ahead and crush it into a fine powder. To help me crush it, I'll be using this old food processor. You will have to break it up first into smaller pieces, otherwise the blade is going to jam, but doing this is going to be a lot easier than crushing it up manually. And after a few minutes, you'll end up with a mostly crushed up powder, which will be good enough for what we need. And as well as having our source of carbon, I also need to make up a set of containers with which to pack the part and charcoal together for when I put it into the forge. Hence why this is also called pack hardening. Now traditionally, you'd make these packing boxes from cast or wrought iron plate, but I'm simply going to use box section steel and I'll make separate packing boxes for each part. The fixed jaw is small enough to fit in its own little steel box, but the moving jaw and main body are just too wide. And the easiest option is to go ahead and join two halves together. And because I am welding galvanised steel, I have sanded off a bit of the galvanising. Now this definitely won't be my nicest welding, long time viewers of the channel will know that, but I broke through a few times so I had to go over it a few times to get a really nice join, but for a job like this it doesn't need to look good. As long as the seal is good, the packing box should work. And with the packing boxes done, I can now start to pack the parts and prep them for the forge. Now you don't want the part actually touching the packing box, so what you want to do first is lay down a layer of charcoal dust, followed by the part. 
and then you'll want to pack in all the free space with charcoal dust until it's covered. Now at this point I didn't know it, but I had made a small mistake. The box needs to be a few centimetres taller, so I can leave a space in the box for the carbon monoxide gas which will be later produced. But of course I will figure that out later. As for now, I'll pop on the lid and then I'll seal the box with some high temperature mortar. Whilst I let the mortar dry, I set up the forge. Originally I had the forge pointing at an angle to hopefully get better heat distribution with the sizes of work that I was using, but looking at it, it quickly became apparent that this wasn't going to work, so I set it up normally. And after about 20 minutes in the forge, it quickly became apparent that something was wrong. The mortar had cracked and the charcoal dust was leaking out. Now the reason for this is pretty simple. Because I hadn't left any space for the carbon monoxide gas which was being produced from the charcoal, it was creating a pressure which eventually built up and split the mortar. Now case hardening really relies on that carbon monoxide gas, so I had to go back and remake the packing boxes so they were a little bit taller so they could have a space for the gas. Now for the case hardening to start working, the parts need to be taken to about 900 degrees celsius, and doing this will take about an hour or so, and even though the packing boxes were red hot, there was no guarantee that the steel inside was red hot too, so I gave it a full hour before starting the stopwatch. Now at this temperature, there are going to be a few things happening inside the box. As I alluded to before, carbon monoxide gas is being produced from the charcoal. At the same time, the steel itself is going to be in a phase called austenite, and in that phase it's able to dissolve more carbon which it will get from that carbon monoxide gas. Because the outside of the part is what's in contact with the gas, it will dissolve the carbon, forming a layer of high carbon steel on the surface of the part, but it will leave the core relatively unchanged. Now the depth of this high carbon layer is going to be a function of heat and time, and there are going to be charts online that will help act as a rough guide that will help you know how deep that layer is. Now because my forge is relatively small and I don't think it was getting all that hot, and because I also wanted a relatively thick case, I let it harden for about 8 hours after it reached that high temperature. And if I'm lucky, that will give me a case which is about 2 and a bit millimetres thick. Now 8 hours of course is a very long time to be running the forge, but thankfully it didn't need all that much LPG to run or at least not as much as I was expecting. Once the parts heat up to the correct temperature, you can turn down the burner, and you'll only need a few psi of LPG to maintain that temperature. And for me, that was pretty surprising, because I was already running out of gas before this project started, so I was amazed that I got 8 hours out of pretty much an eighth of a tank of LPG. And once the gas bottle ran out at the end of the day, I covered the forge with a brick and then I let the parts cool inside the forge overnight. <laughs> 
Apart from the parts getting darker, I can't see any changes to the parts. There was a risk of the parts warping during this process, but since I used hot rolled steel, I'm pretty sure that risk was pretty minimal. Now even though the case is going to be made of high carbon steel, because I let the part slowly cool off in the furnace overnight, the case is going to be relatively soft. So to harden the steel, we'll heat it up and quench it, which is exactly the same process as we do for any other high carbon steel. Now I could have saved myself the trouble of reheating the part and I could have quenched it the night before whilst it was still hot, but doing this isn't recommended. The recommendation is that you let the part slowly cool and then reheat it and then quench it. Doing this will make a more uniform crystalline structure once the part is then quenched and that should increase the strength of the part. After getting the parts up to temperature, I'll quench each of the parts in a bucket of water. Because of what I want from these parts, using water is going to be more preferable than an oil quench, because doing it in water is going to produce a much harder surface than oil. And these are the parts after quenching. I also tempered them in an oven off camera. I did them for a few hours at about 160 to 170 degrees Celsius, which is a fairly low temperature for a steel temper. Doing it at such a low temperature will help retain the hardness. I'm also sure that you'll have noticed that there is a fair amount of oxide scale which is built up on the part. There are many ways of removing it, but since it was the end of the day, I decided to give it a soak in vinegar for a day or two. And as it turns out, the vinegar soak was pretty unimpressive. Even after two days, it took a pretty hefty scrub with some steel wool to get most of the scale off. Of course there are ways to prevent the build up of this oxide, for instance, I could have used a flux, but doing it on these parts would have required a fair amount of flux. And these are the cleaned up parts. At this point I was curious to see if the parts had warped during heat treatment, and to be honest, you don't need a surface plate to see that that part has warped. It warped a bit more than I thought it would, but thankfully I left it oversized to account for this happening. The final thing I want to do is just see how hard the part was. After quenching, it was definitely harder than 65 Rockwell C hardness, but after tempering, it's definitely dropped. To do that, I'm going to use these hardness testing files. It's a set of six files, each rated to a different Rockwell C hardness. Now this test showed that the steel was somewhere in between Rockwell 55 and 60. The Rockwell C55 file wasn't biting into the steel, but the 60 was, which means the hardness is somewhere in between 55 and 60. And this is pretty much spot on with what I was aiming for.
most tool makers vices that you can buy are somewhere in the region of 55 to 60 Rockwell C hardness so I'm really happy with this result. Now originally this is where I would have ended the video but as it turns out the vinegar did an even worse job at removing the oxides than I had thought. Now I'm assuming what is left is iron 2 oxide and that was very quickly turning into iron 3 oxide or rust. Even when given a really thick coating of oil it was rusting really quickly and rust in all these very small voids and holes is a big problem. Instead of going back to the vinegar, I decided to see if electrolysis would work any better than the vinegar. I used electrolysis last year to restore some files and it worked really well. I added about half a cup of sodium carbonate washing soda to a tub of water. I then added all the parts in connected to a wire and on the other side of the tub I put in a sacrificial piece of scrap. I'll hook the parts up to a 12 volt DC power supply, in this case it being a battery charger, and I'll hook up the black leads to the vise and the red leads to the sacrificial part. The way that I remember this is that the red bit will rust. And like the vinegar bath, this is a pretty hands-off process. The only thing you need to worry about is keeping the area ventilated because this whole process will produce hydrogen gas. And after giving it another night, the parts came out looking a lot better. It's obviously not perfect, but the parts aren't rusting anymore. So in the future, I'm going to stick to using this method rather than using the vinegar. And as an added bonus, my workshop won't have to smell like a fish and chip shop. So with the parts hardened and cleaned up, that brings us to the end of this video. The final thing left to do is get it ground to its final dimensions and see if it actually works. Until then, I hope you enjoyed this video, thank you very much for watching, see you next week.